the bottom line is your money must keep moving. When you understand the impact of uninterrupted compounding interest and what that can actually do for your wealth, it's just earth shattering. You know, as Einstein said, it's the eighth wonder of the world. Those who understand it benefit from it and those who don't pay it. Still to this day, we flip about 1,200 single family homes every year. Taking advantage of uninterrupted tax-free compounding guaranteed interest for the rest of your life. But the real power in this is the concept in keeping that money moving at all times. Hey, welcome to the Wealth Webinar. I'm Stephen Nagy. I'll be hosting today on behalf of Chris Noggle. We appreciate everybody being here. So today's going to be a lot of fun. Today, we're going to talk about controlling money and what that looks like, everything that we do with uh, taking back control of our money and solving the money problem. So we're going to talk about a few different areas of how we accomplish that here at the money school and the money multiplier. So we're going to talk about different sources of where your money is and briefly hit on that. And then what we can do to start moving that money, because when you become the bank, when you become your own banker, it's all about control. And it's all about constantly having money always moving and controlling that money along the way. And that's exactly what we're going to cover over the next 90 minutes or so here today is mimicking what the banks do, mimicking what the wealthy do, and following these strategies that we teach and implement on a daily basis. So just real fast as we're getting this kicked off. I'm just curious, whoever's on this right now, if you're new, like your first time on a wealth webinar, your first time joining us, if you could just write new in the chat box, I see a lot of familiar names on here right now. I'm just curious if there's anybody newer on here. And if you are, I'll definitely start at the beginning with you. We're going to get right into this. Those of you that are more experienced on here, please help me out in the chat box. Give your testimonials, how this has changed your life in the chat box. It's always to hear, great to hear from not only our new people, which looks like there's a, brand, a lot of brand new people on today, but also um, you know everybody that's been following us now for months and years. We appreciate all of you guys. And these numbers are really starting to hop right now. So we're going to dive right into this. So when we talk about controlling our money, let me just start here and then I'm going to bring a, a really cool guest on for a few minutes to talk to you guys about something new that we have happening. But what I want you to start thinking about is where is your money? And so when we start thinking about investing and we talk about moving money, so I'm not going to talk about debts today. I'm going to talk more about what do you have available to you already? So a lot of people, you know, when they think about, okay, what money do I have available? They think about their paychecks and money that they have coming in. And after all the bills and expenses and everything are paid, you know, what's left over for your savings. So here in a little bit, when we start diving into the infinite banking concept, I'm going to show you exactly how to take the exact same dollar that you're making right now, but instead of bleeding all that money out to everybody else, you're going to start keeping that money in your family's financial future. So what I'm going to show you how to do is change one thing, and all that is, is changing where your money goes first. And that's the first step into becoming your own bank. So we're going to get into that right now today. We're also going to look at things like how to be smart with the money that we're making. So we look at how to take advantage of tax laws and IRS laws that are on the book. So for example, a lot of you might have 401ks at work or have past jobs that you had a 401k at, or maybe you've started IRAs, uh, whether they're traditional or Roth, it doesn't matter. It's an individual retirement account or an individual retirement arrangement, an IRA, or maybe a SEPs or simple setup or a solo K setup. Well, what we do is we can take those qualified funds, that retirement money, and we can move it into, for example, a self-directed retirement account where there's no taxes, there's no fees paid, anything like that. It's just giving us control of our retirement dollars, of our qualified funds. So now I can grow my money through investments. Uh, we, I can grow a tax-free or tax-deferred, taking advantage of these laws through these IRAs and 401ks and solo Ks and things of that nature. All right. We can also leverage what we already have. So a great example of that, very simple, any of you that purchased homes 
2021, 2022 or before, odds are you right now have a lot of equity in your home. So if you bought a home for $250,000, that home is now worth $600,000. Well, you have two hundred fifty dollars to $350,000 potentially in equity in that property. Well, most people are like, okay, great. Well, my house is worth more. My mortgage is going down. You know, I'm paying it off. That's all fine and dandy, but they're leaving all that equity out there. I like to think of it as, you know, all the two by fours in your house and all the rafters and the drywall, that could be money that we dig into, we dock holes, we grab it out and we put it to work for us. Again, moving money. So things like HELOCs and HELOS, so home equity lines of credit or home equity loan agreements. So tapping into what we already have and then making what's called a spread. So if I'm paying 7% on a HELOC and I'm making 15% returns on my money through like a direct private money loan or something like a private fund, well, I'm making an 8% spread uh, on money that otherwise is sitting there. Well, how much is eight, eight percent? I mean, a hundred grand, that's eight thousand dollars a year. I mean, that's you know, that's that's money coming in. That's real money that can make a car payment. So we're being smart with our money. So where is our money? So that's what we're gonna get into today is what that looks like, maximizing, eliminating the, the wealth killers, eliminating things like taxes, inflation, and volatility. And that's everything that we're gonna get into right now today, how to become the bank. But before I get there and, and show you guys exactly how to start setting this up and taking a advantage of all of this, I'm going to also start sprinkling in today some opportunities on how to move that money. So we're going to talk about things like the private money club, direct private lending on real estate backed assets on real estate backed deals, where we can lend our money just like a bank does and have somebody basically pay us mortgage payments instead of paying the bank. So I'll show you how to start setting this stuff up, to, uh, whether it's a rental, whether it's a flip and all these different things. Well, We'll talk about that today, but before I do that, I wanted to kick this off with a special guest. So what we do is we have a gentleman, Kent Clothier, on with us today. And so a lot of you guys probably know Kent, um, Chris and Kent have been partners for many years. I've known of Kent for many years. Him and his family are rock stars in the real estate investment world. If you've ever been in through any kind of education or bought turnkey properties or done any investing in real estate, you've probably heard of Kent and his team and stuff that they've done in the past. And uh, this last year, um, through the connections with Greg and Chris and, and everything that we've been able to accomplish, you know, we decided to partner up with Kent on a new private fund. And that's what I've asked that we've asked Kent to come on today and just share with us a little bit about his experience in private funds, kind of why we started in this EO fund and just some of the opportunities that some of you could have to join us in this new private fund to really get your money moving and starting to make more money, growing your wealth in a very smart way. So Kent, how are you, sir? Good, man. I'm glad to be here, brother. Excited. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I know we had absolutely zero plan for today as far as an agenda of what we were going to talk about. So I think that's how you and I must, might excel, though, is just kind of having a conversation. So if you don't mind, like um, maybe just a little bit of history about what all you've done or yeah, kind of what this looks like for you, that'd be awesome to hear. Yeah. So, guys, again, it's my pleasure to be here. As Stephen pointed out, I've been uh, I've been in the real estate space for over 20 years now as a as a real estate investor. Started off basically flipping contracts, wholesaling properties for many many years. Scaled a wholesaling operation up to a point where it was doing three to five hundred wholesales a year, and then ultimately that put us in a place God, I guess probably 15 years ago where we were getting a lot of attention, a lot of people trying to figure out exactly what we were doing and how we were so successful right through the last recession and growing a business during those times, especially in real estate, seemed like a fantasy for a lot of people. But for us, because we were using very specific systems and processes and leverage and techniques, again, we were very successful at it and got, got a lot of attention, which ultimately put us in a position to start teaching people how to do that and then giving them the tools and software, et cetera. And we were kind of pioneers and all that back in the day. And been very, very fortunate because we've had about 100,000 people learn over our trainings over the last few years. We've had 35,000 software users. And still to this day, we flip about uh, 1,200 single family homes every year in 11 different markets, mostly turnkey rentals, where we buy an asset and put, uh, we rehab the asset, we put a renter in place, and we sell that asset to an investor as a turnkey investment where we then stay in place as the property management company. So by this point, we have done everything to the property and now manage the property for, for the uh, investors. 
And those are the 1,200 properties we fill, that we sell every year. And we manage 8,000 single family houses at this point and growing. You know, as Stephen said, you know, I've been doing this a very long time. So we've raised over the last few years the better part of a couple hundred million dollars and been able to be very successful in going off and building portfolios in multifamily as well, self storage, industrial, RV parks, et cetera, and equally going out and lending money on behalf of our investors into a lot of the projects that, that uh, or a lot of the, the people that we have the ability to, to feel very, very comfortable with because kind of sitting on top of this entire ecosystem, I, I run one of the most successful uh, real estate investment masterminds for the last 12 years called The Boardroom. And so most of those people that are sitting in there are some of the biggest and brightest stars in this industry. And so having a fund that ultimately has the ability to fund their projects as needed and know that our money is in really good hands because of all the legwork and because of all the relationships has been very, been very fruitful as well for all of us. So yeah, I kind of sit in a very unique position as the saying goes, as you do it long enough, wrong enough, you'll figure some things out. So definitely have all the scars that matter. Not it hasn't always been cupcakes and roses and sunshine. We've definitely made a lot of mistakes, got a lot of experience, but over the years, we've been much more successful than than not. And still here, still kicking and still doing great. So again, I'm glad to share any wisdom that I can here. But as you pointed out, um, you know, Chris is a part of our boardroom mastermind, along with Greg Herlean and others. And we have been, uh, you know, I've, I've had the ability to to be a mentor to Chris and, and very fortunate now get the ability to partner with him and by virtue of that partner with you as well. And we have a fund at this point that we have started in the last six months called Anisio. And it is a it is an income fund. And what that is designed to do is, as I just said, it is a place where as you guys are learning from Stephen and Chris exactly what the wealthy do to manage their money. You know, I'm going to just hit pause for a second and say that, quite frankly, you guys could not be in any better hands. Chris and I had known each other for a very long time. And a lot of the stuff that he had tried to stress to me over the years, I've, you know, I've been very fortunate that I've been wealthy for a, a long time here. But there were a lot of things that I did not really understand until Chris really took the time to break it down for me. This is pre all all of what, what what this is today, right? This is in the early, early stages. And when he really showed this to me, to say that it was eye-opening and enlightening would be putting it very mildly. Not only is it real, but it is it is an absolute. It is one of the things that I can tell you that once you actually understand it and appreciate how the tax code is written by the wealthy for the wealthy, how these vehicles exist, infinite banking and others, and were created by the wealthy for the wealthy, to not only protect and secure their wealth, but to grow their wealth over generations, right? If you are very, very serious and intentional about that, then you are in amazing hands with Stephen and Chris to understand exactly how to implement those strategies. Because although they were designed by the wealthy and are intended for the wealthy, the bottom line is the tax code and these vehicles, they're open to all of us. It is the difference between being ignorant and have a lack of understanding or being knowledgeable and not only having an understanding, but executing. When you understand the the impact that of uninterrupted compounding interest and what that can actually do for your wealth, it is, it's just earth shattering. You know, as Einstein said, it's the eighth wonder of the world. Those who understand it benefit from it and those who don't pay it. You guys are sitting in a place where you get to do that. And so with that in mind, not only our investments, but I'm sure, you know, over the years you will be exposed to other investments. The bottom line is your money must keep moving. When you have money sitting on the sidelines, it is dead. And not only is it dead, it is dying and by the day, right? And meaning the money must keep moving. It must be making money all the time. That is uninterrupted compounding interest and you must keep it. And so you have to educate yourself and understand what all the benefits are so that you feel comfortable deploying your money. And so that you feel comfortable and secure that your money is continuing to grow and that it's in an environment where it is with people who have understand and appreciate their fiduciary responsibility to take care of your money like it's your own. And so with that in mind, I mean, that is what we do with, with all of our funds, but namely this Initio fund. I'll kind of explain what this is right now. It is a fund. It is a $12 million fund that is designed to do one thing and one thing very specifically. In this particular environment in real estate, the wheels don't stop, right? Deals still happen. Although we, you know, interest rates go up, supply may go down, but the reality of this is, is don't ever kid yourself. Deals are still being done. 
But when the credit markets uh, are in this kind of state, like they are right now, in a, in a reasonable environment, lenders get very, very antsy. They get very nervous. They don't understand, you know, they're borrowing money from the Fed. They're borrowing, they, you know, they have, they, their balance sheets, they don't exactly understand every single day where their balance sheets are. Don't have to look very far to go see uh, what happened to, to SVB, the bank that just collapsed, right? Because of them not being good stewards of their depositors' money. So that has a ripple effect inside of all financial institutions. Now, what that represents to us as real estate investors is that funding still needs to take place in deals. Very, very healthy projects with great margins, with, with great partners in amazing places like Las Vegas and other amazing markets. These deals still exist and must get funded. And which then puts us in a position that if we, as a fund, go through stringent due diligence to understand exactly what the needs are of the investors, we have the ability to go and deploy capital, half a million, 200,000, a million, whatever it is, into these deals and be secured in those deals in an equity position or through a first trust deed, meaning we have a lien on the property and we are these properties are not highly leveraged and charge rates that might seem a little unreasonable in the open market, but in a market like this, they are very reasonable because there is no alternative. And there's the opportunity. And there's an act there. If we don't provide the money, somebody else will. And that interest and those rates will go to somebody else. And we've been around long enough to understand that in a little bit of chaotic times, these are the times where you get the opportunity to make significant returns if you are very smart and very diligent and very intentional. And so in Nisio, what we do is we, are, we have raised money and continue to raise money from accredited investors. And so those of you that are accredited, you can invest directly into this fund right through Stephen, right through Chris. When you come into this fund, your money will be locked up uh, a minimum of three years and on all likelihood will have a five-year timeline. We are then taking that capital, our partnership takes that capital in the collective and deploys it as a lender or investor into these projects. The target rate of return the fund is trying to create is a minimum of a 22% annual return. We do that through, again, a rate and term situation like a bank does on a loan or through an equity position in the property where the property is sold and we are taking a rake on that. The way the fund pays out to our investors is that we pay out a fixed flat, what is called a PREF. So if you're writing anything down, I would tell you the way this is the way most funds work. So for those of you that have never done it, we are paying out what is called a 4% PREF to our investors. What does that mean? That means before any other expenses are paid, before any other uh, distributions are paid to partners, et cetera, our investors get a flat 4% annually. Then after that is paid, then we turn around and we do a 70-30 split on all the revenue that the fund generates annually. 70 goes to our investors, 30% goes to us. Make the math real simple. If you take a 24% return annually, if the fund generated that, the first four would go to our investors, and then the next 20 would split 70-30, meaning then the next 14 would go to our investors and we would make six. So us as the partners, the people that are finding the deal, the people that are underwriting the deal, that are people that are managing the deal, on, we are going to make 6%. Our investors in that particular example would make 18%. And so why do people invest in this? Um, why have we had no problem raising money? Why do we want to expose it? Because again, the opportunity to go and invest with real players that have access to real deals where you don't have to do any work. All you have to do is deploy capital. And whether you do that out of a self-directed IRA or whether you do that in some other means, I mean, the bottom line is get the capital moving. If it can earn somewhere from a 15 to 20% return for you annually, hands-free and compounds inside of it, you can take the money out. You can take your proceeds out or you can allow them to compound right inside of the investment over and over and over, over the course of the next three to five years. That is a very, very healthy and reasonable thing to do. Now, by no means would I encourage anybody, if you've got 250 grand and that's all the money you have to your name, you don't don't go put 250 in this. You want to have a lot of different investments going on, but certainly putting $50,000 in here and understanding 
that this money is going to grow over time. It's going to distribute to you every year uh, at a minimum of 4%. You're going to make 70% on all the returns and that we are charging no fees. We get paid out of the 6%. That is a good thing and a reasonable thing for everybody. You get every month, there is a newsletter that is sent out that shows all of the investments that we are currently deploying the capital into. As investments paid off, there's financials that will come out quarterly that will show you everything that has gone on inside the fund. It's no different than effectively owning a percentage of a company. That's the way to think about it. You are, we are communicate on a financial perspective every quarter. You get an update every month. One of the projects that we just recently were very excited that we were brought into to help capitalize was there's a new Four Seasons residence that is being built just outside of uh, Las Vegas. And we were asked because of our relationship, because of my reputation, Greg's reputation and others, and how long we've been in the industry, we were asked to be a part of that partnership group and come on to that cap table. It has broken ground, it is getting ready to go vertical over the course of the next few months. Every one of these residences is anywhere from $3 million to $10 million. Um, they have started selling already. And for us to have the opportunity to be part of the initial investment group through Inicio and get our investors as a part of that is very, very exciting. And so those are the types of deals that um, otherwise most people would never have any kind of exposure to, but because of who we are and our reputation, our investors get the opportunity to kind of play along, ride along with us. We all have our own capital in it as well. So, you know, everybody understands we wouldn't, nobody, we're not going to risk our own capital if we don't think it's a good deal. So we're sure as heck not going to risk your capital as well. And so I would tell you, if you want to know anything about it, Stephen's your guy, like reach out to Stephen. He'll happily share anything with you. If, if Stephen wants to get me on a call or Greg or anybody else, I'm happy to do it with you and break it down. But we have an entire, you know, deck that we can send you and all the information. And again, I would highly encourage you if you have any money sitting inside of a self-directed IRA, for sure, this is a, a great investment because you can't touch that money till you're, you know, effectively 60 years old anyway. So why would you not put it into investments like this and allow it to grow? And I'll leave you with this. If you want to understand the impact that earning you know, hypothetically, somewhere in the neighborhood of 15% a year has on your money and in allowing it to compound in the investment. It's a very powerful rule. It's called the rule of 72. If you have a calculator on your phone or on your desk or whatever, you take the number 72 and you simply divide it by the rate of return you're getting annually on, its, on an investment. So in this case, 15. So 72 divided by 15, the number you are left with, and in this case, that number is 4.8. That is how long it takes your investment to double. If this fund indeed creates a 15% return, then what that does is inside of that five years, if you left it in their compound, it would double. That's what that 4.8 is. It'll take you 4.8 years for that investment to completely double. So you put 50 in there, inside of five years left in there, it would turn into a hundred grand. And I can tell you, as we've all watched a lot of stuff happen in a lot of our other investments, knowing that I could kind of hands-free, being in an investment that has the potential to double like that, all secured by real estate, all things I could go and drive and see and touch on a daily basis. That's a pretty exciting thing. So Stephen, hopefully that was a good explanation, brother. Yeah, no, I, I love it, Kent. I mean, it's uh, you, you hit all the points I was going to bring up um, to talk about. So I really appreciate that. We uh, just had a couple of little questions coming in. You know, somebody mentioned like Chris Crone has something similar. So there's a lot of private funds out there. For me, like on private funds, I've been invited over the years to be part of several private funds syndications, other types of deals like that. I've always declined on them because it was either newer investors, things like that, or just too much work involved on my side. When, But when Chris came to me and told me it was Kent and Greg and Justin Colby and well, some of these guys that are behind this fund, you know, I didn't even think about it. I was all in 100% because I knew that these guys have the experience. And when it comes to private funds, not only are they managing the money, deciding on the deals, making sure that the deals are, are done right and are the right profit margins, you know, they have the experience for that. But more importantly, where does the fund find deals? I mean, you guys all know if you're in real estate, the, the, the money's made when you find the deal. I mean, then you do the work, but you got to find deals to make money in real estate. And these guys have the experience and, and the connections and, and the community to, to find these kinds of deals. Like you just mentioned with the Four Seasons residences. I mean, we meet every week or two on, on calls and we go through the deals that the team is bringing in, the partners are bringing in. And it just, it blows my mind that, you know, I hear on the phone call all the time from real estate investors, hey, there's no deals out there. I'm waiting right now. And then I get in with these guys and they're like, hey, we got this deal, this deal, this deal. And they're all huge profit. It's like, you know, that's what it's all about. So just all the pieces added up for this initiative. And the fact that it's longer term right now, you know, three to five years 
is awesome because so many people are lending on like six month deals, getting the money back, waiting a month or two before the next one. So all of a sudden that 12 or 15% annual return is actually more like eight or 10% because of the time that the money's sitting. So here you put it in there, like you said, you just let that sit in there and every year it's growing and growing and growing. So the 70, 30 split to 80, 20 split, David was just asking, how does that work? It's on all the deals. So any of the deals that we invest in, whatever those profits are, the 70 or 80% split back to the investor, the lender um, is done on each deal. And that's paid out as we get paid, right, Kent? As far as- Well, it's going to be paid out annually. At the end, at the end of the year, we, we distribute. So the, every quarter, 1% PREF is paid to the investors, right? So at the end of four quarters, you'd have that 4% PREF. And at the end of the year, when we uh, get the audited financials and we will we distribute there, at the end of the year, just like in any other company. And that's where the 70-30 would take place unless the investor says, hey, don't distribute to me. Let's roll it into the investment and let's keep going. Perfect. And the uh, the taxes are handled. I mean, it depends on where the money's coming from. In an IRA, it would just be tax deferred or tax free growth if you're just lending cash or from a policy or something. It's just investment income. Right. Just like any other profit, David. So thank you for that question. All right, cool. Well, I just want to see if we have anything else, any other questions coming in. But yeah, guys, not, I would look, I'm 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 easy to find, right? If you have any questions, feel free to ask me on uh you can hit me up on Instagram at Kent Clothier. Make sure you're talking to the one that's got the uh blue check mark. But I would highly encourage you to reach out to Steven. I mean, he's your point of contact. He is an active part of this fund. Like he said, he's on every one of these calls, he's a part of the partnership group here. And so he's more than capable of, of answering any and all your questions. He's a trusted resource for each and every one of you, obviously. And if there's anything I can do, I'm more than happy to jump on. But again, this is not our first rodeo. Uh, we have done this repeatedly and we'll continue to do it. This is, I think, our, I think it's Greg's, either his 10th or 12th fund, and it's my sixth fund over the years. And we've raised, again, the better part of a couple hundred million dollars over the last few years. We know how to take care of our investors. We know how to make sure that we are, and Stephen doesn't tell you, we had a conversation here a few weeks ago. And um, one of our partners was like, man, it seems aggressive for us to be sending you know, monthly updates to our investment, you know, our investors. And if I'm going to be accused of anything, I'd rather be accused of over communicating with our investors than under communicating. And that's just the kind of operation that we run is like at the end of the day, we want you to know, we want you to feel a part of it. We want you to ask, ask, ask any questions you've got along the way. And as we get exposure to a lot of different asset classes, we want you to get that same exposure, whether that is multifamily, whether that is, you know, hospitality, whether that is self-storage. We have two big self-storage deals that we are underwriting right now that are very exciting. I mean, the, the most recession resilient asset classes, and if anybody's writing anything down, I tell you to write this down. Historically, the most recession resilient asset classes in the United States that have always fared very well are multifamily self-storage, RV parks, and industrial. And those are all right on front and center uh, of what we of what we do. And if we have the opportunities come along for us to diversify and to get in some other stuff that makes a lot of financial sense because of, um, again, rate, term, equity, whatever the terms of the deal are, we're going to do that as well. But we are very focused and have a very good understanding of how to benefit greatly in, in these times, right? And there's a real opportunity right now, putting money out, out there, in a methodical and intentional way and uh, in, a, in a, I don't want to call, I don't want to say safe, but certainly in a safer way where people are really paying attention to the details and have the experience and have gone through this already. This is a big opportunity that's just sitting out there. One way or the other, I would highly encourage everybody to try to get involved as, as whatever is comfortable for you, get get some money out in the market right now, because these are these are the times to take advantage of it. Yeah, absolutely. One more fun question for you, Kent, appreciate your time today. Yeah. Where did the name Inicio come from? It means to, uh, it is Latin for uh, to inspire and uh, to start, to take action, to make things go. And so that is where it comes from. I'm a big, I'm a big guy, um, big action taker. Anybody that knows me knows that you can see it on the sign right behind me, right? The time is now, you know, I'm always about acting in the moment, go, 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 that do not waste any opportunities in front of you. And I have, uh, I've lived my life by that creed for the last 20 years. It has served me very well. Everybody in my community knows all about it. I have a you know a lot of different stories of, of why I got to that place. And so as, as we were sitting down, coming up with the name of the uh, organization, it just seemed fitting that uh, kind of fits exactly what we're all about. Yeah, I really appreciate it, Kent. To stay you know this big in this industry for that many years, like you've been able to do, you have to do things right. You have to treat people right, your clients, your students, your investors, otherwise, your reputation, you know, I've seen it happen to so many people over the years. 
And so just the fact that you're still going stronger and better than ever with the boardroom, everything you guys are doing, it's just a testament to that. So I appreciate you just from being in the industry myself for 15 years and watching what you've been able to accomplish has been a big motivation for me. So I really appreciate you, uh, your time today, Kent, and everything that you do. And um, I look exactly. forward to seeing anybody else that we can work with on here as far as investors go. Man, anything I can do for you guys, you just let me know. I'm happy to come back. You know, any, I know you guys do these on the regular and if you ever want me to come back and share other knowledge uh, outside of Inicio, I'm happy to do it. You just got, you reach out to me, let me know. With that, I'm out, man. Peace. Thanks, Kat. See you soon, man. Yes. Bye. All right, guys. So not everybody hop off, stay on. We're, we're going to keep going. That was just a little introduction to today's webinar. So did we answer all the questions though? Everybody's good on here and I didn't see anything else coming in. Uh, David, I can hit you on that tax part. Yeah. Distributions would be income. Um, investment income coming in. So depends how you have that set up. Uh, I don't know, David, on if you roll, if you uh, keep it in the fund, I, I believe it would not be a realized gain since you're not cashing out, it's remaining in there. You pay the taxes all at the end, but I would just want to double check that with an accountant before I give you a firm answer on that one. But with that being said, appreciate everybody, um, you know, learning a little bit more about Inicio. I have a, a brochure, we have a website, I have the documents. So if anybody wants to learn more, just send me an email, snaggy at privatemoneyclub.com or snaggy at whatever email you have for me.com. And I'll just send over to you the brochure, the website, some of the bullet points and, and a couple of the documents if you want to read through them. Uh, but it is a 25,000 minimum, 150,000. If you want to get into the next level, we can do uh, self-directed funds. We can. It's very simple. It's very easy. It's all done through DocuSign and we'll get you into that. Um, so just shoot me an email if you want to learn more. So what I want to do now is pivot over. You guys want to talk a little bit about infinite banking today? You guys want to talk a little bit about the money multiplier? Because I was going to hit this for all the new people on here. I wanted to talk about infinite banking. It's been a, um, it, it's been getting more and more important to me as I've been watching the markets and everything that's been going on. To me, the 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 money multiplier is just such a beautiful thing because keeping money moving, like Ken said, if your money's sitting still, it's die is dead and it's dying, and that's due to things like inflation and everything that's going on in the world right now. So at least with infinite banking, when our money is quote unquote sitting and it's not in an investment or being moved somewhere through a business or something like that, while the money's sitting, at least it's sitting in a place where it's taking advantage of uninterrupted, tax free, compounding, guaranteed interest for the rest of your life. So if I'm going to have my money sitting somewhere, why would I not have it sitting in this account that provides all of that? And so when I usually do this presentation, you know, I open up and I, I just simply ask the question, how many of you would want to become your own bank? And then I ask why, like, why would you want to be the bank? What is your reasoning? Like everybody says they want to be the bank, but why do you want to be the bank? I mean, put your answers in the chat box if you guys want to play around, play play along for a minute here. So why would you want to become the bank? And, and then usually we start hearing, you know, well, banks know how to make money. Banks know how to move money. Banks can take advantage of different laws that are out there um, and all these different things. So absolutely, you're 100% correct on that. So, but to me, like, think about it this way. If you could open up a bank, and that and control. I love those of you that are putting control in there. Absolutely. So, but let me ask you this way then. If you could open up a bank today and that bank came with an ATM machine and you knew that in 10 years from now, you go to that bank and you put in a hundred dollar bill and the next day you could go to that bank and pull out $130. And then the next year you go put a hundred dollars into that bank. And the next day you can pull out $150. And the next year you go to that bank and you put in $100 and you could pull out $200. And the next year you put in 100 and then you could pull out $220. And every year you could go to that bank, you could put money in. And the next day you could pull more money out than you put in that previous day. And that amount you could pull out becomes more and more and more and more and more every year of your life guaranteed. And that money is all tax free. How many of you would want to have one of those banks that has one of those ATM machines? Everybody, right? Why wouldn't you? And then let me ask you this. How many of those banks with those ATM machines would you want to have? If you can have one ATM machine that does that, what if you have 10 ATM machines that do that? What if you have 20 ATM machines that do that? What if you're like Hannah's dad who has 24 ATM machines that do that exact same everything? How many of you want to do that? And that's exactly what we're building here right now today. And it's not just in 10 years from now, it's starting immediately, all right? So this is what we're looking at. Or another way to look at this, this is one other example sometimes I'll say. What if you could start a business today? And that business 
lost a little bit of money the first year. Well, let's say it lost like 10 to 20% the first year. But the caveat is you can actually make up for that 10 to 20% loss very easily. But let's just pretend the business lost money in the first year. A lot of businesses lose money the first year. And let's say that the second year, that business lost another 5 to 10%. And let's say the third year, that business is, you know, right around break even, maybe it lost a few percent, maybe it made a few percent. But then that business, starting in the fourth or fifth year, every single year that you own that business, you make money. And every year you own that business, it's guaranteed you make money. And every year that you own that business, you don't actually have to put any time in or work in to do it. That business just runs itself on autopilot, producing more and more money to you every single year, guaranteed. How many of you would be willing to start a business today that might lose a little bit the first few years, but then is guaranteed to make you money? That's like the dream business. Like, please, dear God, let my business do this. for the Like, that would be the best business in the world. Well, essentially... That's exactly what becoming your own bank and the infinite banking concept allows you to do. When you see this right now, what I'm going to show you, I think you're going to say, holy cow, okay? So it just give me some examples of different ways to look at this as we get started with this. And then, of course, you guys, have you seen some of the presentations? You've seen, of course, like, how do you get back every dollar for every car you'll ever buy, drive, and own? How do you, how do you invest somewhere? And instead of making 12% returns on a direct money deal, you're making 43%. Well, let me start showing you exactly how to do all of this. Fair enough? You guys want to dive into this? Who's ready? You guys ready? Just put yes or something. IBC in the chat box. Yeah, A. Pearson, I'd rather pay myself interest. Yeah, I mean, I, I said you guys said this just a minute ago. Like, instead of we take the same dollar, except it's, we change where that dollar goes first. And now instead of bleeding all that money to other people, now we're keeping it all within our family's financial futures for years and years and years to come. All right, so this is gonna be a little bit different than a typical presentation, but we're gonna have some fun with this, all right? So we're gonna, we're gonna roll through some of these slides. We'll come back to that. We've talked a little bit about money and opportunity. See, this is all stuff. You guys are experienced group. You're already following us. Go to the YouTube channels. Join us for all the webinars. This is what it's all about. We talked a little bit about this morning with, with um, this afternoon with Kent already. So you're my 5%. So let's dig into actual infinite banking, okay? Why aren't more, don't worry about why people aren't successful. You guys are going to be successful. Three books real fast before we get started. Second, I want you guys to read these books. Write this down. Robert Kiyosaki. I got these books back here too, right here. Robert, right here, second chance. Robert Kiyosaki, second chance. He talks all about the infinite banking concept. That's a good one to read. Anything by Tony Robbins, but Money Master the Game talks all about the infinite banking concept. I'm just giving you guys some additional resources. So from this today, you can continue to learn more before we hop on a phone call to help you get started, okay? So there's just more. This one you have to read. I'm working on, but, but you guys have to read this one. Becoming Your Own Banker by R. Nelson Nash. It's like the godfather of infinite banking. He started all this years and years and years and years and years ago. Unbelievable. You have to read that one though, Becoming Your Own Banker. All right, these next two I'm gonna give you guys just for being on the webinar today. So Mapping Out the Millionaire Mystery. This is a book that Brent Kessler and Chris Noggle wrote together a few years ago. It's like an updated version of Becoming Your Own Banker. So Mapping Out the Millionaire Mystery, The Private Money Guide. And then I got another book. But another one, how to get back all the money for every car you'll ever buy driving. So those three books, just for being on here today, I'm going to give you for free, okay? They're digital copies. So what you're going to want to do is there's a couple of ways that, that um, you can do this, but this might be the easiest. So go to this website right here, put that, put in your information. And what it's going to do is it's going to email you digital copies of those books just for being on today. All right, so you can email me or uh, just click that link right there. And what that's going to do is it's going to bring up a screen. You put in your name and email, and then it's going to email you those eBooks. Uh, one of them is going to be like a drive. You can download it. One of them is like an email. You can download it. And then there's also a call calendar on there. If you want to schedule a call with me, uh, you can do it right from that link. Or email me, and I'll send you the stuff too. Okay, so whatever is easier for you. Just just uh, wanted to share that real fast. All right, let's keep going. So if you guys don't know me yet, I've been working with Chris since 2019. I've been a financial advisor at a college in 2006, worked with Ameriprise Financial, fully licensed, Series 766, 215, variable annuity, all that good stuff, right? I learned about real estate investing in 2007, 2008, started buying as the crash was occurring, started learning a lot about real estate, started doing some wholesales, did a couple flips here and there, started to learn what I loved about real estate, and I started to learn what I hate about real estate everybody's different guys. Like some people love, 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 love flipping houses. I do not love, 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 love flipping houses for lots of reasons. A lot of it's just, I'm not a, really a creative person when it comes to that stuff. Like I looked at a house and like, somebody's like, 
that wall should be that color and it needs these kinds of floors and it needs this kind of design and the kitchen should be over there and the bedroom should be there and the living room should be there and like they just they 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 got it right i don't have that okay i'll be the first you learn in life like what you're good at i turned 40 years old in january i've learned through my 40 years of living so far what i like and what i don't like what i love about real estate the passive side the lending side all of the benefits of owning real estate everything that real estate allows us to accomplish, whether we're dead broke today or whether we have millions of dollars in the bank today, real estate can allow us to make a lot of money no matter what side of that coin that we're on. And that's a lot of what Private Money Club does. We'll talk about that later. But that's what I love. About I love teaching it. I love taking somebody that has nothing, knows nothing about it and, and whatever their goal is with it, having them very successful in a short amount of time. I love speaking on it, teaching these concepts, working with people one-on-one, -on -one, doing phone calls, like all of that stuff's what I love. But so all of us are different. Um, so I learned what I love about the business. What do you love? And let's hone in on that and have you do that. And maybe you don't know yet. Maybe you need to learn both sides, but that's what this is all about. So I've, I've spent the last many, many years traveling the country, working with thousands of students. Um, when it comes to the infinite banking concept, I've now helped uh, over a thousand people get started with their own infinite banking concept systems. You know, Chris and I have really been able to grow this where we now have five or six different money mentors helping get people started and, and, and really are, are, are doing a lot of fun things right now with different events and, and trainings and everything going on. So I encourage you guys to follow us. Um, if you don't already, the YouTube channel at the Chris Noggle at Private Money Club. We do Money Club Mondays every Monday. We do multiple shows every Wednesday. Again, if you guys email me or click that link that I put up a minute ago, I'll send all this to you so you can follow along. Follow me on Facebook. Just find me, Stephen Nagy, on Facebook. I think it's Nagy Leadership, at Nagy Leadership across all my social media. I don't really do Instagram, but sometimes the stories and things. So follow us. We're always posting all the cool stuff and updating and we do market updates and stuff like that. So anyways, all right, enough of that. I'm down in South Florida, by the way, if you can't tell by the picture. All right. Your real estate business lives and dies by the network and the connections that you make. I mean, after all, your network, well, it's your net worth. That's what you always heard, right? If that's an area where you desire improvement, well, Private Money Club, it's for you. PMC saves you precious time and money by bringing the real estate world, well, right to you, right in the palm of your hand. So get in on the action like so many others have by going to privatemoneyclub.com and sign up. So here's a real basic concept. If you're new to this, pay attention. If you, if you know the answer to this, please don't answer. All right, so if you're new to this, can you make money earning 4% while paying 6%? What do you guys think, yes or no? Can you guys make money earning 4% while paying 6%. Let me, let me show you guys what I mean by this, all right? So, you know, you might think to yourself, well, obviously not. Like if I'm making 4% and paying 6%, I'm gonna lose money. It's a negative spread. And you said before, you're gonna make money off spreads where if I'm borrowing at 7% in a HELOC and I'm making 15% on a private loan, I'm making a 7 8% spread. But here we go, watch this. So it depends on the type of way that we're doing this. So the best example that everybody understands is buying a car. Let's just say I wanted to purchase a car. I've been saving my money for many years and I have $25,000 saved up in my savings account and I'm ready to go purchase that car for $25,000 cash. So I go down to the bank and I uh, walk in and I say, hi, I'd like to withdraw $25,000 from my savings account. Well, immediately the teller is going to say, hold on a moment. Let me go get my manager. The manager is going to come over and they're going to start asking you a bunch of questions. First off, if you try to withdraw over like 10 grand lately, like the banks often don't have it. I just talked to somebody a couple of weeks ago. They were saying they had to pay contractors like 25, 28 grand or something. They're contractors. They had to go to four different branch offices just to get the 20 some thousand dollars they needed to make that payment. So banks don't have that cash, which is bizarre. But also they, they don't want you to take your money. Like they want, so they're going to ask you questions. They got to report it and all that stuff. But nonetheless, we gave up control the day we put it in the bank. All right. So we knew this was coming. So the, the manager comes over and says, Hey, listen, like, what do you need the bank? Hey, I'm going to buy a car. And the, and the manager says to you, well, listen, what if I do this for you? What if I allow you to leave your money in your savings account, the $25,000, leave it in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to use that savings account as collateral so we can lend you the money so you can go buy that vehicle. And you say, all right, well, we can do that. Well, what are the terms for that? What's that look like? And they say, well, in your savings account, we're going to give you a 4% annual return. So you start thinking to yourself, well, heck, man, that's pretty cool. Like 
my savings account typically makes me like less than 1%. So if you're going to bump it up to 4% for me, well, that sounds good. Like, all right, I, I'm, I'm digging that. And you say, well, what are you going to charge me for the loan that you give me to go buy the car? And the manager says, well, we're going to charge you 6%. And you say, all right, Mr. Bank manager guy that thinks he's so much smarter than I am. Listen, I'm just the guy that's trying to go buy a car that has a job. But I know, I'm not a finance manager, a finance pro. I know that if you give me 4% and I'm paying you 6%, I'm going to lose money, right? Check this out though, all right? Because the bank sometimes knows what they're doing. This is exactly what we're going to start mimicking, all right? So think about this for a second. The $25,000 money uh, for the car note, okay? Let's say it's 6%. Let's say it's a five-year car note, 60 months. That's pretty normal for a car note, right? Well, think about what happens with this. That $25,000 loan to buy a car, what are you going to do with that, pay, with that, with that loan? You're going to pay back some of it every single month, right? So if we do the math on this, it's $483 a month that we're paying back on this car note, okay? And what is that doing each month that we pay this loan back? It's reducing the balance of that note. So $25,000 minus $483 the first month, minus $483 the second month. So each month it's going down and down a year, meaning each year that $25,000 balance is going down. That 6% that's being charged is being charged on the balance of that note. So over time, that amount's going to go down. So check this out. The future value is about $29,000. Now, what's going on with your money in your savings account? What's that money doing? Well, that 4% that's growing at $25,000 over that same 60 months, what is that money doing each year? That's staying in your savings account and it's compounding. So after the first year, we're going to have 25000 times 4%. And that 4% is going to be added on top of the 25,000. So let's say that's 25,000. Let's say that's $26,000. Well, the second year, $26,000 is the amount that the 4% is growing on, not just the 25. So this is an increasing amount that is compounding in your policy. So look what happens over here. At the end of the five years, that money is going to grow to be over $30,500. So check this out. Because this was a depreciating loan over here, and this was an appreciating compounding return over here, we actually would have actually made over $1,500 paying 6% while only earning 4%. So just keep this in mind as we go through some of this stuff right now, because yes, we are going to work off of spreads in a lot of the stuff that we do, but these different concepts, looking at simple interest versus compounding interest, paying loans versus growing wealth, there is a big difference there. So we need to start rewiring the way that our our brains function, the way that our brains look at money. And that's why we teach so many different strategies on controlling wealth and why we say infinite banking is not a product, which I'm going to show you in just a second what that product is, but infinite banking is a concept and a system because it's in how you use this where the real power of it is. Yes, we can put money in our infinite banking product, the policy, and have it sit in there and grow for us, uninterrupted compounding tax-free, that's fine. It's better than sitting in a savings account. But the real power in this is the concept and keeping that money moving at all times. Does that make sense to you guys? So remember this as we get going with this here today, all right? Now, the, the comments that you have on here, the chat box, guys, I'm not really keeping up with that. So I appreciate everybody chatting in there. If you do have any questions, put those in the Q&A box and I'll make sure to keep my eye on the Q&A box and then we'll come back to the, the questions here in a second, all right? So what is the money multiplier method, all right? What is this concept, the infinite banking concept that I keep talking about, all right? Well, we're gonna teach it to you in three different parts. Number one, the machine. So what is this machine that we're using to build this banking system, to do the infinite banking concept? Number two, the marathon. This is not get rich quick. This is not let's invest, put our money somewhere and all of a sudden we're gonna be millionaires overnight. Mm -mm. This is a process. Just like anything good in life, it can take time to make it work. But the beautiful thing is it doesn't take a lot of your time. You'll see what I mean by that in a second. Number three, what everybody's favorite topic, the millionaire. So how are we going to use this machine and this marathon to create wealth, to create the millionaire, to create generational wealth for, for, for kids, grandkids, generations to come? Not only to help us today, but also, also help us for 
for years and lifetimes to come. And that's where it becomes a lot of fun. That's where we can start talking about things like real estate investing and the private money club and the Inicio, Inicio Capital Group's private fund, things of that nature. So what is this machine? The machine that we are building this entire process on is a dividend paying whole life insurance policy from a mutually owned insurance company. And now let me just mention a couple of things real fast before we move on. Why do we use a whole life insurance policy to build this concept on? Because I'm not just here to sell you life insurance. The life insurance, the death benefit is wonderful. It's very, very important. And as I start to get a little bit older and my family and you know that part does resonate with me more and more and more. So while we don't build it because of the whole life insurance, it is wonderful in my opinion that it's built on that for that added benefit. But the reason we use a whole life policy to build this on is because there's no other vehicle out there in the world, the United States of America especially, that allows us to do what we do with this concept and the way that we run money, keep money constantly moving through this policy, there's nothing else out there in the world that allows us to do this. I mean, if you look at the perfect place to put money, like I said before, a bank with an ATM machine, you would wanna have tax-free growth. Whole Life provides that. You'd wanna have guaranteed growth. Whole Life provides that. You'd wanna have little to no volatility. Whole Life policy provides that. You'd wanna have liquidity, accessibility to it. The specially designed Whole Life policies provide that. Compounding, uninterrupted compounding interest. These Whole Life policies provide that. Easy to set up and maintain, low fees, little to no fees. So it gives us all of these checkboxes on what the perfect scenario for warehousing our wealth. It gives us all of that. And the most important one is that accessibility and liquidity to the money. Because not only are we putting our money into this thing, but immediately we're going to be able to access that money to pull it out and get that money moving to make more money in real estate deals and business ventures and opportunities and whatever it is that you're investing in while simultaneously the money's over your compounding. So we're putting it into here and we're using that money to do these things, whether it's paying off debt, whether it's purchase making purchases, investments, whatever the case might be. So just wanted to make that. Now, also, this is not a policy. You go to Policy Genius or call up the insurance company or your friend or your networking group person or whatever. These are specially designed and engineered. For us to build this for your benefit, uh, we have to give up 60 to 90% of our commissions. Most agents aren't willing to do that. We have to really study and learn and constantly improve our way of designing these policies to benefit you to the max. We have to understand your situation and your goals to build these to benefit you to the max. So we specially design and engineer these specifically for each one of you, custom to you for this concept. This is all we do at the Money Multiplier. This is all Chris, myself, our team does all day, every day is build these specially designed and engineered policies. So the company that you use also, so, you know, there's a lot of mutually owned companies out there. Not all of them are great for what we do with this. So we found the best companies to use for this process, the longest track records, financially secure, the best of the best insurance companies. And then we design these specifically for you. This is all we do. So no, you don't go out and, and talk to your existing agent to do this. Also, this is how we get paid. I mentioned we give up 60 to 90% of our commission to do these policies, but we do a lot of them and we do not charge you for any of this. So the consultations, the questions, the setup fees, the setups, the approvals, the ongoing support for years and years and years to come for the rest of your life, you pay us $0 ever. We get a direct commission from the insurance company for bringing them the business. That's it. So just want to make that very, very clear right now. What is going on here? So we're going to build this thing on this and you'll see examples of how this works as we get going. In fact, banks are the largest purchasers of whole life insurance in the country. It's something called BOLI, Bank Owned Life Insurance. You guys can Google this stuff. So write this down and go check it out later. Type in B-O-L-I, Bank Owned Life Insurance. So this is why everybody at the bank is a, is a vice president, right? You always see VP of whatever at banks. It gives the bank an insurable interest to purchase a policy on that individual and banks know how to make money. We agreed before, let's mimic what the banks do. This is what banks are doing. So does it make sense for you to do it also? Probably, right? Um, and I have lots of examples of who's used this over the over the years. People like Jim Harbaugh was the highest paid college football coach in the country 
um, and a large part of his salary and, and um, compensation comes through specially defined, um, specially designed deferred comp whole life policies. Joe Biden has a bunch of these things, a half a dozen of these policies. Why? Control, uh, protection. They're protected from, from outside people. They're very private, these whole life policies. So lots of reasons. People like Walt Disney started Disneyland using whole life. Um, Doris Christopher of the Pampered Chef. I mean, I could go on and on. Ray Kroc of McDonald's. Again, you guys can research a lot of this stuff. The Rockefellers, the JPs, the Morgans, the Chases. You know, some really good books. Um, how privatized banking really works. What would the Rockefellers do? I mean, there's so many good books out there on some of these families and how they've used this over history. So just wanted to throw a few of those out there for you guys, all right? So let's get back to um, how banks move money so we can start doing the same thing when it comes to these policies. What do banks do, all right? So let's say banks, we're gonna start. So again, this is looking at spreads. This is a pretty simple example, but how do banks work? So if you take $100,000 and you go deposit that money at the bank, the bank is going to take that money and they're going to start moving that money. All right. So they do things through like mortgages. So if they're paying you 4% in a savings account and then someone goes and purchases a home, well, they're going to get that home mortgage from the bank. The bank's going to charge them 7%. They take that money from the bank. They give it to the seller. The seller takes that money. And what do they do with it? They put it right back in the bank. So the bank just does this over and over again, things like cars, things like home remodel loans, things like debt consolidation loans. So the bank is constantly keeping this money moving. So they're paying you 4%, but what do they just make doing this? Well, they made 3% spread on the mortgage, 4% spread on the car note, 5% spread on the home remodel loan, 8% spread on the credit card debt consolidation loan. So at the end of the day, they just made 20% on your money. But in reality, it was actually a lot more than that, right? Because if they're paying you 4% and they're making 20%, that's a 5x return, five times what you're making. So they're really making 500% off of the money that you're leaving parked at the bank in a checking, in a savings in a money market, in any of these types of accounts that they have. They're making, and in fact, it's actually a lot more than that. There's a company out there that researches banks. Go check this out, bauerfinancial.com. And bauerfinancial.com tells us that banks make between 400 and 1300% off of money that we leave sitting there at those banks. Banks know how to make money. We wanna keep that money in our lives, okay? So I'm gonna show you exactly how to start doing that right now. Stop making the banks rich and make you and your families rich moving forward. Fair enough. So how do we start doing this? All right. Well, it's going to start with where our dollars go first. And to understand where our dollars go first, let's look at what people spend money on. All right. Now this is, um, this is an average and, and these numbers have changed just a little bit, but let's take a look at this. All right. So most people, if, if for every dollar that they make about 20%, 20 cents, 20%, 20 cents of that dollar goes to an automobile. So it could be payments, gas, upkeep, whatever. 30% goes to housing. 40% goes to everything else. Kids, vacations, travel, entertainment, food, which leaves the average American with 10 cents that goes to savings at the end of the day, if everything else went smooth. And actually we're starting to see right now, savings rates really decline and credit card usage really increase, uh, which is an opposite of what was going on during COVID. But now we're kind of inverted back and it's going in the wrong direction. But nonetheless, that's why you guys are here right now. All right. So this is what most people do. And if they're lucky, they have that 10% left over that goes to savings. But let me ask you this question. Are you important? Meaning like, would you value your life and your family's lives over like the automobile, like, like a BMW or over like, you know, going out to the bar and spending money or something like that, right? Or, or even like a, a fancier house or something like that, all right? So what I want you to do is start thinking that you're important because if we can start remembering that we're important and paying ourselves first, watch how much this can change what your financial future looks like. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna change one thing, where our money goes first. So instead of giving it to the automobile company and the bank for your mortgage and then, you know, everything else that you give money to and then keeping what's left over, well, let's pay ourselves first. So let's start with the 10 cents in savings. 
So when we earn that dollar, immediately 10 cents of that dollar is going to go into our banking system first, and then we'll take care of everything else. All right. But watch what happens when we do this. This 20 cents that goes to an automobile, on average, five cents of that, five cents of the 20 cents goes to interest on average. And that interest right now goes to someone else's bank. But by paying ourselves first and using our bank to fund things like automobiles, which I'm going to show you how to do in the next example, we are able to keep that five cents. And instead of paying that average of five cents on the automobile to someone else's bank, we're now able to bring it back into our family's financial system. Okay, By doing that one thing right there, we're able to increase our annual savings by 50%. Think about it. If we were saving 10 cents before, and now we're able to save five, an additional five cents, a total of 15 cents, because we are now um, keeping that money in our financial uh, family's future, well, we just increased our annual savings by 50%. That one thing right there. But what if we did that with housing also? On average, 25 cents of the 30 cents that goes to housing goes to interest. Why? Because look at an amortization schedule. Almost all of the interest paid on a 30-year mortgage is paid in the first seven, maybe eight, nine, 10 years. On average, people move in this country or refinance their house on average about every seven years. So the banks are getting all their money up front on interest, and then you're moving, and then there's that little due on sale clause where there's a refinance where you have to start a whole new 30-year mortgage every time you move or a whole new mortgage every time, right? Or someone buys your house. So it starts it all over again. All the interest has gone up front. So if we did this with housing also, we can recapture that 25 cents we're bleeding right now to the banks back into our financial future. And then of the 40 cents and everything else, another five cents of that goes to interest. So while we're at it, let's recapture that money. So by doing nothing different, we just took our annual savings from 10 cents a year up to about 45 cents a year, just by changing one thing, making ourselves important and paying ourselves first. So how do we do this? That's the question. And that's what I'm going to show you next. So let's take a look at this in relation to doing something like buying a car, right? So I showed you before, if we recapture that five cents of the 20 we're making in car payments, we can keep that in our savings. Well, how do we do that? All right. So let me show you exactly how this is done. This is what we would call kind of taking a look under the hood of the machine, the machine being a whole life policy. Up here on the screen is what we would kind of look at as like a, what's called an illustration, and when you start one of these policies for yourself, as you're going through the approval process, you're going to get your illustration with your numbers on it. So it's going to have your policy year, your age, the amount of deposits that are going into the policy. So that's that's number one right there I want to point out. So where you see deposits, the $10,000 a year, those are actually the premiums that are going into the policy. Those premiums are whatever amount you want them to be. Our guideline minimum would be like 10 times your age on a monthly basis. So if you're 40 years old, just add a zero to it, $400 a month, $4,800 a year. So that'd be kind of like a guideline minimum of what your premium deposits you'd want them to be going into one of these policies for this to make sense. If you're 25, 250 a month. If you're 60, maybe 600 a month, something like that, right? So in that range, that amount or more would be a good starting point to kind of look at or 10% of your gross income. That'd be another kind of way to look at it. But that amount is whatever you want it to be. And you'll see how we can play with this and um, how the first year you can put more money and stuff like that. But the reason I want you to start looking at these as deposits instead of premiums is just from a mindset perspective. Because when you think of a premium, you think of like a bill, like something you have to pay. But once you understand that these premiums are actually going into your new banking system and are growing your entire wealth for the rest of your life and for generations to come, well, you're going to look, start looking at these as a deposit into your new bank. Because if you make a bunch of money on a wholesale deal or a real estate deal or a bonus at work or something like that, you may, you're excited to go down to the bank and make that deposit or to get that direct deposit into your account, right? Why would I not be excited about depositing money into my own bank, which is exactly what this policy is serving to be? So a lot of this is mindset. So I just want you to start thinking from this point moving forward, these are not premiums. These are deposits. Fair enough? Can all of you do that, please? Awesome. All right, I'll show you the rest of this in a minute. This has to do with the recapture of the money when we start buying cars. Uh, the cash value is the amount available 
um, to use in the policy. And then we have the death benefit, of course, over here as well. Uh, a couple other things, like I said, when you get your illustration, your age will be on here. Um, and age doesn't matter. We can start these policies for babies. Uh, we do these policies for people into their 60s and their 70s. Now, if you can't qualify because maybe you've just gone past the point, maybe, you know, where it just doesn't make sense as an age, or maybe your health isn't the best, or something came up that, you know, you can't get a, a whole life policy. Well, we can always use somebody else's life or something of that nature. So we do have um, solutions for that also. Just talk to us about it. All right, cool. All right, so let's get into this. How, how do we start paying ourselves first and recapturing that money? So in this case right here, this individual, they wanted to put $10,000 a year into their policy. So they started doing this $10,000 a year. This shows you how much of, they had available each year. So in the third year of this policy, they had $29,000 available of the 30,000 they put in. Yeah, about 29,000. So what they did, maybe a little bit more than that. So what they did is they took a, uh, they took the $25,000 loan to buy a car, right? Now, a couple of things on this. When, let me ask you this. If you were to go buy a car for, you know, get a, a note from the bank for $25,000, you would pay the bank back on a monthly basis, right? So this is lesson number one, I guess, about using your policy for the infinite banking concept. Rule number one is we always want to treat our money like we treat the bank's money. Let me say it one more time. We always want to treat our money like we would treat the bank's money. So if we would pay the bank back, if we were to take a car loan, well, if we took a car loan from our bank, does it make sense for us to pay our bank back? Absolutely. And we'll help you set this stuff up. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to set up a schedule in this case, where you're paying yourself back $500 a month. And we can determine this by deciding, hey, what's the going rate for a car loan right now? Let's say it's 7%. Well, what we could do is we could take $25,000 and we can run it through a financial calculator at 7% annual and, and come up with exactly what that monthly payment would be. And then we could just start paying ourselves back each month. As simple as that. And we have a whole mapping team, implementation team that's going to help you with this. And we'll create the sheets for you. So all you have to do is follow it. But I just want to teach you a little bit about the inner workings of what this looks like. All right. So each month we're going to pay ourselves back for a total of $6,000 each year. We're paying ourselves back. We're going to take that money, just put it right back into our banking system, which is this policy. So we can use it over and over again. So what does this look like? So over the first seven years, we put a total of $70,000 in premium deposits into the policy. We took a loan out for $25,000 to buy a car. We recaptured the money just like we would the bank's money back into the policy for a total of 30 years, you know, over 60 months, five years, a total of $30,000. So, so far, we put $100,000 in. We took $25,000 out, so a net injection of $75,000. So look how much is available in our, in our policy to use right now, $67,000. So what does this just tell me that happened? This tells me I purchased a car that I now have sitting in my driveway for $25,000, completely free and clear. And my account still has $67,000, 68,000 of the $75,000 that I put into it. So I've recaptured 91 cents of every dollar to buy that car or 91% of that money that I used to purchase, I've now recaptured back to myself, okay? So not bad. I still have the car sitting in my driveway free and clear. I could do what I want with that, keep driving it, sell it, whatever. But I've recaptured 91 cents. But I told you a second ago, I'll show you how to recapture all of the money for every car you'll ever buy, drive it on in the future, right? Well, here's the beautiful thing is this doesn't stop after seven years. This keeps going. So let me show you what that looks like. So in this scenario right here, just to prove my point, we're going to stop putting money into this thing after the seventh year. So this 10 grand is going to stop going in. Now, in reality, that 10 grand would keep going in for the first 10 years. And then that amount would drop by about... I don't know, 50 to 75% or so. And then that smaller amount would continue to go in. And you'll see in just a second why you'll want to never stop putting money into this thing in just a second. But for this example, just to prove my point, let me show you exactly uh, what this looks like, all right? So in the eighth year, we put no more money into this policy, but we purchased another car for $25,000. Exact same thing. We pay ourselves back the 25 grand, treat our money just like the bank's money. But over here in our account, the money's going to continue to compound and grow for us. So after those 12 years, 
We put no more, more new money into it. We took 25,000 out and we recaptured with interest that money back into the policy. So technically we net injected 50,000, 5,000 in, but look what happened. The policy grew from 67 to $91,000. It grew by over $23,000. We just put five grand into it. We now have $91,000 in our account. We have two vehicles totaling $50,000, free and clear sitting in the driveway, $91,000 sitting there in the account ready to use. And we've now recaptured all of our money to buy, drive, and own those two vehicles. And then we can just do this over and over and over again and recapture all of the money for every car we'll ever buy in the future. And if this works for cars, what else would it work for? Airplanes, boats, expenses in your business, real estate, you tell me. But to make this work, we do have to follow three rules for infinite banking. Rule number one, always pay yourself first. Rule number two, always treat your money like the bank's money. And rule number three, always recapture and recycle your money. So I'll just put those on there, pay yourself first, treat your money like the bank's money and pay yourself back with interest and always recycle and recapture your money. But here's the difference is if I'm in year three of paying back the car and something financially happens to me and I can no longer make that car payment for a few months, what's going to happen? Well, odds are BMW or Honda or Acura, whoever your loan is through, they're going to send a tow truck driver out and they're going to repossess that car. They're going to tow that thing back off, right? But here's the difference. If I'm being my own bank and I'm using my own money, who's in charge? You're in complete control the whole time. You're in charge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, Stephen, listen, I, uh, I borrowed the money from you. I'm looking at myself in a mirror and I'm going to say, hey, I borrowed the money for this car, but I, gotta, I can't make payments for a few months. You think I can get a break? I'm going to look at myself in the mirror. I'm going to say, you know what, Stephen, you're a good guy. I really like you. And so I'm going to give you a break. We're not going to repossess your car. Just please start making payments again whenever you can. Fair enough. Because I'm in control. I'm in charge. I'm the banker. It's my bank. I make those decisions. So I'll probably cut myself a break, right? But it's up to you. That's the whole point right there. So this is what it's all about right here. These are the basics of how we're going to start paying ourselves first and then becoming the bank to keep all that money in our financial futures for years to come. All right. Anybody with debts on here? Here's another way. Pay off your debt a lot faster while still building wealth. Why not? This is awesome. Watch this. All right. So this is an actual case study of a uh, banker. Um, uh, excuse me, not of a banker. This is a case study of a chiropractor, one of uh, Brent's clients, a chiropractor. He was making great money. But like a lot of people, when you start making great money, you also start spending a lot of money and tends to happen. You rack up some third-party debt and that's what happened to this chiropractor. So he racked up a total of about $478,000 in third-party debt. He was paying $5,777 a month. If you add all this up, $5,777 a month or about $69,000 a year in third-party debt payments. It was going to take him 19 years to pay all this off. So he said, what if we have a better way? That's exactly what we did for him. So check this out. What we did with this chiropractor is we started a policy for him, putting $25,000 a year into it. Again, it's up to you how much you want to put in. $2,500 a year, $25,000 a year, $250,000 a year. How much do you want to put in? It's up to you. When he put the 25,000 in, he had 14,863 available to pull back out to use. So you'll notice on here, he doesn't have access to all of the money that he puts in. Okay, remember I was saying how you might have access to a little bit less. So we can build policies these days with higher cash value. So if you want closer to like 20, 22,000, something like that, we could build at higher cash value. But nonetheless, this was built um, with long-term growth in mind and not as strong a cash value the first couple of years, but this thing kills it. Watch this, this is really cool. So what we did is we took this $14,863 out of the policy and we paid off the Discover card, we paid off the Lowe's card and we paid down the Nordstrom balance. So now we were able to eliminate these monthly payments going to Discover and Lowe's. So now he has $5,329 going to third-party debtors 
and $448 that are no longer going to Discover and Lowe's. However, let me see if you guys are following. That $448 a month that was going to Discover and Lowe's, what are we going to do with that $448 a month now? What do you think we're going to do with that $448 a month that was going to Discover and Lowe's? Uh, what do you think we're now going to do with that $448 a month? Snowball it, pay down the next loan, pay yourself back. So exactly. So those of you that said snowball, pay down the next loan, this is exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to, we're going to take that $448 a month and we're going to pay it back into what we call a segregated bank account. So this is important. When you start a policy, you start the infinite banking concept, we're going to recommend you open up what's called a segregated bank account. And all this is, is a separate checking account. And that separate checking account is going to help you track and account for the ways that you're using this policy. So when you take the money from the policy, it goes into the segregated account. From there, we're going to deploy it to wherever it needs to go. And then we're going to recapture that money back into the segregated account so we can either use it over and over or get it from there back into the policy so we can then borrow again and use it over and over again, all right? So it's just like a little holding tank for our money to go between our banking system and whatever we need to use it for. So in this case, we're going to take that 448 a month and we're just going to start putting that back into the segregated account so then we can use that to deploy it to pay off the rest of these loans here in just a second. Very similar to how Velocity Banking is done. Second year, $25,000 goes into the, dep the policy. Now you'll notice the second year, there's $16,500 available. Remember the first year, there was only like $14,000 available. Each year, the amount of money that you have available to pull back out is going to be more and more for the rest of your life. You heard me talk about this at the beginning. We also have $5,300 in payments available to us. What are those payments? Again, that's the 448 a month paying ourselves back into the segregated account that built up over the year, 5,374. So we now have 22,000, the cash value, the segregated account, 22,000 available to tackle the Nordstrom, the Wells Fargo, the private loan and pay down the BMW. So now we have $3,800 going to third-party debtors and $1,900 going to our segregated account each month. Year three, same thing, 25 in, 25 available, 23,000 in the segregated account, total of $48,000, pay it down, pay it off, pay it off, pay it down. 3,600 going back to our segregated account, $2,100 going to third-party debtors. Now, let me make sure you guys are following real fast. This is how the marathon works. How much do we put into this thing so far? $25,000 a year. For the first three years, 75,000. How much do we take out to pay off debt? 14, 16, and 25, a total of $55,000. So if we put 75 in, we took 55 out to pay off debt, how much is left remaining within the policy? What do you guys think? Put it in the chat box. That's what you would think, right? The answer is actually $75,000. And the reason for that is because when we put the money into the policy and we take the money out to use it, when we take the money out, we actually, it comes out in the form of a loan, just like with that car example at the beginning. What the insurance company does is the insurance company uses your policy as collateral and they actually loan you the money from the insurance company's general account using your policy as collateral. And what that allows to happen is it gives you access to all of that money, in this case, $55,000 so far, while the entire $75,000 through premium deposits that we put into that thing continue to compound and grow uninterrupted every year for the rest of your life. Compounding interest, you have to take advantage of it, all right? And this is how we do so. So I just wanted to make that clear. That whole amount stays in there compounding. And here's the other beautiful thing about it is like we were joking before about repossessing the car, those loans that we take from the policy, they don't have to be repaid. We're always going to tell you to be an honest banker and pay yourself back with interest, but they don't have to be because all the insurance company do is doing is they're taking collateral against the death benefit that they're going to have to pay you one way or another when you die. So if you have a million dollar death benefit and you have a hundred thousand dollar loan out at the time of death, they just take that hundred thousand dollars out of the million and they pay $900,000. So they don't care how or when or if you even pay back that money that you're taking out of the policy, all that money's gonna sit in there compound and grow because you're in complete control every step of the way. So just wanna make that very, very clear right there, all right? So let's keep going with this. Year four, same thing, right? Year five, same thing. We're getting there. Only 
$91,000 left $1,200 a month. Year six. And, and let, me, let me point this out over here real fast. So you'll see in year six, the deposits drop to 10,000. And look what happens when he deposits 10,000 in that first policy. He has 13,000 available in the sixth year. That's a 30% cash on cash growth on his deposit in the sixth year of this thing. And you'll see in the seventh year, it's more. In the eighth year, it's more. It's just more and more and more and more. But what happened is he was limited because of MEC rules and IRS regulations to only 10,000 instead of 25,000 going in starting in the sixth year. Now for you, because of some new rules and laws and things like that, this will happen in like the 11th year instead of the sixth, which is awesome for you. But for the chiropractor here, it happened in the sixth year where his deposits dropped from 25 to 10,000. But the chiropractor loved what he saw over the first five years. And he wanted to put more money into the policy, not less money. So the chiropractor decided to do what? He opened up a second policy. He opened up another policy. So now he has his first policy continuing. He's putting $10,000 a year into and a second policy that he now can put $25,000 a year into. But look what's available in cash value. Again, the first policy is, is already efficient. So he's making money on every dollar he puts in. The second policy is not efficient yet. It takes a few years. I've mentioned this several times already, right? It takes a few years. So he's starting over in the first year of that second policy. But nonetheless, he was happy with it. I'm happy with it. Are you? So we took that in the sixth year of this thing. We paid off all third-party debt. Now, all of that money, all of that interest, he was giving to everybody else every single month. He now is doing what? He's still paying it, but he's paying it back to himself. So all of that interest is now growing in his family's financial banking system and his family's financial future, growing their wealth and growing their world every year for the rest of their lives, all right? So he's now keeping that in and he's no longer bleeding all that money out of there. So this is what we call a debt map. And we'll do this for you also, okay? I mentioned before, when you start a policy with us, you don't pay anything. We, we make our money from the insurance company, but we provide unbelievable service and support to help you use the infinite banking concept. Why? Because if we know if you not only start this now, but use this the right way, guess what? You'll want to open additional policies just like the chiropractor because you'll see the value and how powerful it is firsthand. You'll want to open policies for your spouse. You'll want to open policies for your business partners. You'll want to open policies for your children, for your grandkids. You'll want to share this with your family members. So that's why we do this. So we create the debt map for you. We create these different plans for you in the implementation process as soon as you have that policy. And we and we show you, we meet with you. We reach out to you three, four, uh, once every three to four months, check on you. How are things going? Do we need to update anything? But we do all of this right here for you. So just wanted to point that out. Uh, what I like to call a debt map. Where are we today? Where do we want to go? Let's create the absolute quickest and most efficient way to get you there uh, as possible. So it starts with the initial consultation. It starts with what are your goals? What does your situation look like today? Do you need to get out of debt? Do you need to invest? So let's set up the policy properly from the start. So the way you can schedule a call, I'm going to put it on the screen one more time. You can email me, snaky at the money multiplier.com, snaky at private money club.com, snaky at chrisnoggle.com, whatever you email, send me an email. I'll send you some resources. I'll send you the call links to schedule a call with myself or one of the money mentors. Or if you already have a call schedule, say, hey, I was on a wealth webinar. Um, you know, watching Stephen today and just wanted to follow the strategy that he was talking about. And we'll make sure we get that set up properly for you. Um, or, uh, and again, if you go to that link right there, uh, the ca call calendar is on there. You can get all the eBooks as well, or you can just go to nagyleadership.com. It has all my social media and everything right on there for you also. Uh, so wanted to put that on the screen. All right. So I got a lot more to share with you guys. I know we're already at 2.30. So I was going to get into some investing stuff uh, next which is what everybody loves to talk about as far as becoming the millionaire. Um, so things like, what if you don't have any bad debt? You know, what if I'm looking to grow wealth right now? And, and this is where it, it really becomes fun because now we can start looking at, you know, instead of just making money one time, one way, we can start making money a lot of ways. All right. So we want to start talking about things like, you know, real estate, whether that's private 
uh, funds, like we talked about it with Inicio, whether that's passive income, like private lending, whether that's active income, like wholesaling or flips or rental properties or things of that nature, whether we're talking about note investing with Kevin Shortell or crypto investing, uh, these are, you know, owning and starting businesses, precious metals, you know, these are all ways we can build wealth, but we can integrate into growing wealth using this infinite banking concept. So we have the uninterrupted compounding interest over here while simultaneously growing our wealth. So what we'll do is next week, next Wednesday, I got to double check. Uh, but in the next week or two, definitely come back on and we'll start getting into more using policies to create wealth, um, using policies with the private money club to create wealth and multiply your wealth. So let's continue that conversation over, but I'll give you a, a preview real fast of that. So here's a policy we started for a young lady, I don't know, earlier this year, end of last year. But look at this right here. She wanted to put $50,000 a year into this policy, but the first year she had an additional $100,000. So what we can do is we can design this to put a larger amount in up front the first year. We can front load it a little bit. We call it a one-time dump in. So it allows you to get that larger amount in there up front and then do a, a, a you know more manageable about annually moving forward, okay? And just to point out here, this 50,000 a year is a maximum. If she runs into some financial trouble in the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh year, whatever, she can drop that amount all the way down to like less than $20,000 and it's fine. So there's a lot of flexibility on these also. What we can do, just make sure you talk to us on that initial consultation call so we can answer all your questions and make sure that your, your um, situation is covered, okay? So make sure you email me or, or get a call scheduled so we can do that, all right? But let me, sh let me show you this example. So over here is the increase in net cash value. Again, that's the amount, the net cash value over here. That's the amount each year that's available to pull out to use. So she puts in 150 the first year, has 132,000 available to use. Look at this. In the third year, she puts in 50. She's pulling more than the initial 50 back out. And again, this, this 150, you don't have to wait the whole year. You can request your first loan within the first 30 days. You're getting money back within the first 30 days to deploy out, to pay off debt, to make a purchase, to buy more real estate, to invest, start a business, whatever, okay? Within 30 days, you're not waiting within 30 days. Well, let me give you an example of this. Let's say that she does some real estate and then in the eighth year of this thing, she wants to do some private money lending, okay? So if you're gonna do some private money lending, the money has to come from somewhere. So she goes into our policy. So in the eighth year of this thing, she injects $48,000. That's how much the premium deposit was in the eighth year, 48,000. Her bank grew increase in value, $66,000, okay? So that's a 37% cash on cash return in the eighth year. Her money grew $18,000 in profit that year for doing nothing but just putting the money in there. So then she takes this money and she does a private money loan. Let's say it's at 12% annual return. So she's gonna make 12% on the private money deal. She's going to make 37% within her policy, tax-free. So it's really effective yields higher than that. But nonetheless, 37%. Now she's going to pay 5% interest on that loan from the insurance company. Because when you take the money from the policy, the insurance company charges you eh, right now anywhere between like 5 and 6% um, annual simple interest on that loan. But let's just say they have the money out the entire year. So she pays the whole 5%. So she just made 12%, made 37%. She paid 5% for accessing the money. So she just made a total of 44%. So let's compare that to doing that from a bank account. If I was just to go down to Wells Fargo right now, where I've been depositing my money for the last 10 years of my life, and I borrow or I take the money from Wells Fargo and I lend it at 12% on a private money deal, how much am I going to make that year? 12%. But by taking the money from my infinite banking policy, remember your money's got to go somewhere first, but because I started my own banking system and I started to pop paying myself first and depositing the money in my bank in somebody else, instead of somebody else's bank, it now allows me to make a 44% return on my money that year instead of 12%. So what would you rather make? 12% or 44%? And all we did different was where our money went first. This is called becoming your own banker. And this is what the infinite banking concept, especially the millionaire phase is all about. So like I said, um, we could talk 
moving money and investing and creating wealth using the system all day long. We'll save that one for another wealth webinar over the next couple of weeks. But for today, I appreciate everybody being here. Let me just make sure I didn't miss anything when it comes to the infinite banking concept. And then I'll hit your questions real fast. I do see a few questions coming in there. So loans never have to be repaid. I said, said that the death benefit is tax-free when it gets paid out to whoever your beneficiary is. Policies are protected in most states and exempt against judgments and liens. We can use these for businesses. So remember to ask me about, you know, loaning money or using it for Coley company and life insurance or what that looks like. Kids policies are unbelievable as well. I would highly recommend those for your kids. Um, they're really, really, really cool. And the amount that you decide to fund the policy with is completely up to you. Uh, we did mention that right there. All right. So with that being said, pull up the last screen and I'll hit your questions. All right. There we go, guys. All right, so I'm going to put it back in the chat box one time. I appreciate everybody sticking along a little bit extra with me. Um, so Matt said, would it make sense to set up direct deposit to your policy? Yeah, if you're paying source of income instead of another bank. Yeah, I mean, Matt, if, if you're, if you're, it depends on what you're trying to do with it, but but maybe ask your, your money mentor that on a phone call. And I think that would make more sense. If you're if you're paying your premium deposits on a monthly basis, you could probably just do like a bill pay to pay them each month so you can kind of forget about it. But if you're paying annual, you wouldn't really need to do that. For the recapture of the money, um, yeah, you can definitely set up like a little uh, bill pay where you know, it comes from your primary checking account to a segregated account. And then from there back into the policy, something like that, you can definitely do that. So different strategies just depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, yeah, Josh, this is recorded and it'll be put on the YouTube channel um, later this week. So you can watch that recording at the Chris Noggle. Uh, with that said, the idea of compound interest begins to work against you if you do not at least pay back the annual interest. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. You, you, we always recommend the once a year, the insurance company, when it comes to the interest, once a year, what happens is the insurance company sends you basically a, um, a statement letting you know how much the, you know, how much you can put into your policy through premium deposits the following year, and then how much interest accrued the previous year throughout the year. And what we recommend, especially in the early years, is to pay that out of pocket, whatever that interest was, just to keep up with it. You can account for it that way, track it that way. Now in later years, once the policy is more efficient, if you want the policy to make that annual interest payment, you can definitely do that. But in the early years, I would recommend uh, paying that interest out of pocket each year for sure. Thanks for bringing that up. If someone wants to open a policy for an employee, yeah, so it would have to be a key man policy, like a key employee, but we can definitely do that. And then there's different ways to set that up. So you can do it where the employee does not have access now and you control it and you give it to them later on. You can have it where you fund it. You can have it where they fund it. There's different ways to send that up, Elsa. So just give us a shout and uh, we can hop on a phone call and definitely talk more details about that. Well, that's all the questions I see coming in. So for today, guys, uh, like I said, thanks everybody for being here. If you need anything at all this week, give me a shout. I'm here for you or hop on a call with um, one of the other many mentors. They can definitely help you get started as well. Um, and if you want to get those books, just go over to that moneyschoolrei.com forward slash snake or snakeleadership.com. Takes you over to my link tree with everything um, or send me an email. Send me an email and I'll send you the calendar links also so we can schedule a call and um, and talk through it, all right? So let me just give you guys my email one more time. My call calendar is just a little booked out right now. So I was trying to get everybody a, on a call quicker. But if you did want to schedule, if you did want my call calendar, it's right there on the screen also. Um, I am headed to Colorado on Friday um, and I'll be back next Tuesday night. So I'll be checking emails when I'm gone, but I won't be able to do a lot of calls. Um, so we're just going out to Breckenridge for a long, long, long Easter weekend. But outside of that, I'll be back. And then um, the end of April, of course, of course, I'll be out in Salt Lake City for the money, private money club, money tank workshop event. And um, but yeah, all right, guys. Well, thanks for being here today. Appreciate everything. Yeah, we're doing Ask Me Anything at 430 Eastern. So join us at 430 Eastern for Ask Me Anything. But hope everybody's having a great week. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much. I'm out. Bye. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. We're putting up tons of them, but I think if you like this one, you'll probably like that video as well. Not only that, I've got a book that I created, Mapping Out the Millionaire Mystery, where we actually show you what the wealthy do in the game they play with money. I want you to have that for free. And if you wanna know about all my new videos coming up, click that alert button, actually smash that alert button, and you'll be notified every time we put a new video. So we'll see you on the next episode.